in the blessed holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ to the saints of the lost and found sheep of the house of Israel. More and more people are finding our scriptural study and insight site there at scriptures4america.org, and may I encourage you to tell little people about it. We like to have these short studies in scripture, and before I start this study, I want you to know I always start with prayer, but I want to start by saying that sin hinders prayer. Now, there is a sin that most people do not recognize. It's a sin that I say easily comes in. The reason I say most do not recognize it is because prior to this scriptural insight and study, I had a Sunday school class with my local church, and, and I talked to them about the sin that easily comes in, a particular sin. Which, which sin is it? Now, there's plenty of sin, I made sure that they knew that sin is a transgression of God's law. You'd be surprised how many people do not know, according to the Scriptures, what the definition of sin is. And the Scripture tells us in 1 John 3, 4, that sin is a transgression of God's law, or sin is lawlessness. So what is the sin that so easily comes in? And they, I went around the room, and they started guessing. One person said lying, the other one said pride, the other one said lust, the other one said, uh, I don't remember what all they said. I just know that no one said the sin that we're going to be speaking of in this scriptural study and insight. And that sin comes from a, com it, that sin is a disobedience obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ found in Matthew 7, verse 1. And that's where we're going to start. Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus said this in Matthew 7, 1. Do not judge, lest you be judged. I think the King James says, judge not. And you've heard all those Judeo-Christians tell you, particularly the Judeo-Christian preachers tell you, judge not, judge not. Well, I want you to know that the Scripture says that we are to judge not. Do not judge, as it says in Matthew 7, 1. Now, there's more there about judging, and there's quite a bit more in the Scriptures about judging, but some of you might wonder why I'm bringing this lesson wasn't long ago I brought a sermon, and I pointed out in the sermon how the Edomite, Amalekite-type preachers that we have in the Judeo-Christian church world of today, as they program the minds of the people and twist and skew the scriptures, they like to compartmentalize scripture. And, oh, have we not heard this scripture? Judge not, lest thou be judged. Judge not. Oh, they love that scripture, don't they? But I pointed out that we need to recognize what the enemy, and it's coming true. People in the land are beginning to see what an enemy to this country these preachers are. But we need to see how they have compartmentalized scripture. Oh, yes, they love to tell you to judge not, but do they tell you about the scriptures that teach you to judge? No. It's just judge not. Now, they don't mind judging. Some preacher likes talking to you right now. They don't mind judging him as a radical, an extremist, cult leader, or whatever they want to call him. It's just that they just don't want you to judge them. Them it's gotten so bad that they are ordaining, as I pointed out in some past sermons, pedophiles into the priesthood, into the, uh, into the positions of preachers. We know that the Catholic Church, that vile, corrupt outfit, has plenty of priests that are pedophiles, and they don't do anything about it. Oh, judge not. If you were a false prophet, wouldn't you want the people to have it grained into their head that they are not to judge? Sure. Well, Jesus said, beware of the false prophet who comes to you in sheep's clothing. Well, now, how can, 
He said, you'll know them by their fruits. How can you do that? How can you obey that scripture if you don't judge? In fact, the scriptures teach that we are to judge. I can bring you to a scripture that says, use righteous judgment. I can take you to a scripture in 1 Corinthians. Was it 1 Corinthians? Yeah. Paul said to the Corinthians, what? Have you not even judged this man? Uh, an immoral man in their midst? He said, I'm not even there and I've judged him. The point is, is that we need to harmonize the scriptures, particularly the scriptures on judging. But at the same time, I want to drive home this point in this scriptural insight and study that Jesus did say, do not judge. What did he mean? Hopefully you'll understand more by the time we're done. Let's go, as we think in our minds, first of all, we know that the Bible commands us to use righteous judgment. The Bible admonishes us to beware of the false prophet. The Bible directs us to separate ourselves from sinners, that uh, evil companions, corrupt good morals. You can't do all that without judging. But at the same time, the Bible teaches so clearly as is taught here in this mess, this sermon, uh, this scripture, Sermon on the Mount, not to judge. And there's other scriptures that we'll look at that teach that clearly as well. So what does it all mean? Instead of compartmentalizing it, let's harmonizing it. And this is what it means. It means that we are not to be judging our brothers and sisters in Christ with being critical of their ways and their actions when, particularly when, we're not any better. Let's go to Matthew 7 again, and this time read verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, Do not judge, lest you be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you, and why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Now that kind of brings it a little more into focus. And that last point in verse 3 was a question. And when the Lord asks a question, he expects you to ponder it and answer it. And basically, you see the context here in judging is that you're judging somebody and you're just as guilty as they are. And he says, why is it you can see the speck in your brother's eye, but you can't see the, the beam or the log or the moat? big old splinter, if you will, in your own eye. Now that was the question. What is the answer to that? I ponder that. When I run across a question like that in Scripture, I try to think, well, what is the answer to that? And I think that's what the Lord wants us to do when he asks a question, is to make us think. And I think I was given the answer to that. There's a statement in the world not necessarily in the Bible, but it's certainly taught in a world that's streetwise and wise to the ways of man, and that is, love is blind. Now, if you think about it, we hear people say, why well, just don't see what he sees in her? Well, he's in love with her. And love is blind. Or it might be the other way. I don't see what she sees in him. Well, love is blind. Uh, and so the point is, is if love is blind, I think the answer to that question, why do you see the speck that's in your brother's eye or splinter and not see the moat or log in your own eye, is because love is blind. We love ourself. And so we're blind to our own self. I think that's the answer to that. You might think on that. It's not a major portion of this study, but it's something to think about. 
Because if it's right, and I think it is, then one of the ways that you can keep from disobeying this command, one of the ways you can keep this sin that's so easy to come into your life is to love others like yourself and to crucify self, as the Bible teaches. And in fact, crucify self daily. There are a lot of parallel scriptures that I want us to see in this study. Maybe one of the major ones is Romans chapter 2, verse 1. It says, in Romans 2, 1, Therefore, you are without excuse, every man of you, who passes judgment. For in that you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. And... As we become wiser and a bit more humble, we begin to see that, you know, we got that same problem only in a different way in our own lives. I've seen this happen before, particularly with children of alcoholics. Actually, I've seen it, but I had the illustration described to me once. Uh, young boy grows up into a, in a house that has an alcoholic and the uh, father uh, doesn't provide for the family, doesn't uh, um, take care of the family, and the boy makes up his mind, I'm not going to be like my father. And guess what? Everybody's telling him, you're just like your father. It frustrates him because he doesn't see that why he would be called just like his father. Well, he's taking care of his family. He doesn't drink like his father drank. But he is so caught up in his quest of materialism and providing for his family, he still doesn't provide the needs that the family needed, just like his father didn't provide the needs. we just got to be careful about this judging thing, is, is the point. Because so very often we're guilty of the same thing. Another parallel scripture worth looking at is the one found in Luke 6, 37. And... I like this scripture because you've got to be careful uh, how you measure people because you might not measure up any better than the way you're measuring people up yourself. And Luke 6.27 sort of addresses that. So very often we get caught up in conversation about other people. This is what it says. It says, Do not judge and you will not be judged and do not condemn and you will not be condemned pardon and you will be pardoned well that leave it right there I, that wasn't the scripture i was planning on but that's we'll address that there's several scriptures i want to address and do not judge and you will not be judged let's get that down do not judge and you will not be judged and do not condemn and you will not be condemned pardon and you will be pardoned now in regards to judge, Jesus said if there's any way you can keep from going before the judge in the court, do it. We won't get off on that, but basically the courts weren't any better then than they are now. And Jesus was teaching way back then, give the shirt off your back, you have to, to keep stay out of court. Because, you see, these creatures that we read about in Matthew 23 have taken the position in Moses' seat. And it's a good thing to stay out of court. Now, I've been in court. It's not a pleasant thing to be there. But it's a lot better not to be there. Because when you're in court, you're going to be judged. Now, you might get a favorable judgment or you might not get a favorable judgment. But if you're not in court at all, you don't get judged. And Jesus is saying, if you want to stay out of the supreme, I mean talking about the supreme court, Judge not. Judge not and you won't be judged. I want you to understand something. That Jesus is trying to help us to stay out of this having to be judged. That's what he's trying to do. And when you judge others, you'll end up getting judged in this life. So very often we take it that it's going to be in the hereafter and the great day of judgment. No. I had a lady one time tell me about a friend of hers that had a little child. 
put her in the car seat, and this child just screamed and carried on something terrible. And she said to herself, I would never let my child do that. She judged this woman for the way her child was behaving. And her next child, the one that she got, behaved the same way. The whole family, there's nothing they could do to keep that child from shutting, uh, to, from keeping its mouth wide open in a loud scream as it sat in the car seat. And then it recurred to her that she had judged her girlfriend and now she was being judged. I think uh, my wife told me once a story uh, about a bunch of young girls getting together. And there was a girl there that was a little heavier than the other girls. And uh, so they, the girls, girls can be mean, so can boys. But they got together and, and they were all talking about this other little girl being a little bit fatter. And they convinced the one girl to go to her and talk to her about it. And you know, she did. And you know what happened to her? She stopped growing up, started growing out herself. And this other girl, she just kind of grew out of it. That's what happens sometimes in, in adolescence. And uh, she, she did quite well. And this girl, now today this girl is a very fine young lady, but she realized, she looked back on it, that she got judged herself because she judged this girl. Judge not if you don't want to be judged. Some other scripture, Matthew 7, ver Matthew 5, verse 7. And this talks about mercy. It says, and we read, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Oh, don't we love to receive mercy for ourselves. But we can be merciless on other people. This is pe people. This is what Jesus is trying to talk about. We kind of got to get this thing in balance here. Judge not. One thing that I came across that I think is so very important that we be honest in this. It's found in Second Samuel chapter twenty-two, verse twenty-seven. We want to be pure in our honesty about ourselves and others. Uh, because, well, the scripture explains it. It says, With the pure, thou dost show thyself pure. And with the perverted, thou dost show thyself astute. What is it saying? I did a series on the subject of deception. I probably didn't drive home well enough in that series. But the greatest deceiver you'll ever find is God himself. And if you won't if you're going to deceive yourself and the thinking you're so all right and perfect that you can just judge everybody else about the way they handle their children or how they do this or they do that, uh, God will not show himself pure to you. You might chew on that scripture a little bit. There's several other scriptures I want us to look at. Mark 4.24, I think, is the one I was thinking about that has to do with conversation. We'll bring that up. It says, and he was saying to them, take care what you listen to. By your standard of measure, it shall be measured to you, and more shall be given you besides. It's so easy it is sometimes to get caught up in listening to what someone else has to say as they are judging someone else. And I think that scripture applies to the subject at hand in this scriptural insight and study on judge not. Just be careful of what you listen to. And sometimes you can just say, you know, I don't want to hear that. I think that's getting in the area of judging and I just don't want to do it. And it makes people a little uncomfortable, but sometimes we just, people, we got to recognize this is one of the commands of the Lord. Now, the reason I bring it up is not that it's one of the greatest major sins out there, but sin hinders prayer. And this is such an easy sin to come in. We can just judge others. We just got to always kind of pull up on the reins and check ourselves that we don't do it. Another scripture, James chapter 2, verse 13 several scriptures in the book of James. This one says, 
for judgment will be merciless to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So you might keep that in mind. Be merciful. You don't know. You know, it's very, I've always said, it's. don't judge another man's horsemanship until you've had to ride his horse. And it's so easy to judge another man in the way he's handling his household uh, relationship between him and his wife. You don't have the kind of wife he's got or vice versa, or, uh, or his children. Every child is different. And learn to show mercy and not be so all-fired judgmental because it will come back on you. I've learned this one in James 3.1, talking about getting judged. It says this, let not many of you become teachers, my brother, knowing that as such we shall incur a stricter judgment. And that just came home to me a long time ago. It's not just talking about the judgment in the here and after, but when you get in this position, such as the one you're listening to right now, you get judged a fair, a fair amount more than maybe others do. And that's why he said, you just take warning, be not many of you teachers, knowing that as struck that you'll incur stricter judgment. James has got a lot of things to say on judgment. James 4.11 drives her home. This is what it says. It says, Do not speak against one another, brother. He who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, are you, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge of it. As I see the clock running down, let's get to Romans 14. Romans 14, verse 10, another scripture on judging. And then we'll go to one more in the book of James, chapter 5. But in Romans chapter uh, 14, verse 10, it too pertains to judgment. And it says, we read, But you... Why do you judge your brother? Or you again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm trying not to compartmentalize Scripture. I want to harmonize the Scriptures. And when we harmonize the Scriptures, we do see though they've compartmentalized it to keep us from judging the evil that is in our land today. But we do see there is a place for us to recognize we're not to judge one another so very harshly. Leave some room there for mercy like you leave room for yourself for mercy. Have as much love for the other as you do for yourself. And there'll be a lot less judging going on, and you'll get judged a lot less yourself. Show mercy to others, and you receive mercy. Boy, you start this judging thing, and it'll come down on you hard. And you'll find out that in your very lifetime, you'll get judged the same way that you judged others. And if I could get this across to young people, it's taken, well, taken this preacher a bit of a lifetime to, to really see just how God works. As you judge, you will be judged. Remember it. And Judges, uh, James chapter 5, verse 9. James, the whole chapter uh, 5 of James is an end-time prophecy. End-time prophecy of what's going to happen. But in verse 9, it says this in regards to judgment. And this is the time we're in. It says, do not complain, brethren, against one another, that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. And that he is. The judge is standing right at the door. And so when it comes to judging one another, now I'm not talking about if you see a brother, I want to get this straight, if you see a brother and sister in sin, uh, 
a brother or sister in sin that you're not to uh, go to them, correct them. You can't do that if you don't make a judgment call. Of course you can't. Uh, I'm not saying you don't ever judge. I'm saying that what the Scripture is saying in regards to judging, we easily get caught up in and we easily disobey. There are just some things that people do and say that aren't worth making a point of and judging them so it doesn't come back upon you yourself. So these things on judging needed to be said, and I need to say this, that when we begin to learn that we are not to judge, this is a good one to think about as we close out this study on judge not. Do not judge those that judge you. You know why? Because you've done plenty of judging yourself. And sometimes you look at those that are judging you and say, well, this is the way it humbles you. And they, you kind of can have sympathy and compassion on them because it will come back upon them. So do not judge those that judge you. Judge not, lest you be judged. Make sure you remove that beam that is in your own eye before you try to remove a speck from your brother's eye. Be careful that you're not a hypocrite in committing the very things yourself in a different way that you don't realize before you make this judgment call. And be careful. Be careful when it comes to this thing of judging. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless those of you that are his, bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, lift his countenance upon you and grant you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Judge not.